So our adventure continues. Last, 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 um, yesterday I described briefly, everything is briefly, electrical fields, Coulomb's law, pri uh, principle of charge conservation, Ohm's law, system of equation, and very briefly I spoke about methods. But what I wanted to emphasize, in all electrical methods, without any exceptions, we measure field caused by surface charges. Lucky for geophysicists, they arise at interfaces. If they would arise, and what we measure, an earth surface or borehole, effect due to this electrical field due to these charges. That's physics. As in gravity, we measure gravitational field due to masses. In electrical methods, we measure electrical field due to charges which arise interface. It would be disaster if they, they would appear between inside of layers. What we would like to know where is the boundaries. And fortunately for us, this source is exactly located at this interface. So that's behind of what I wanted to tell. Now, then we started to consider second field, which we use in the electromagnetic methods widely, fortunately. Uh, again, fortunately, magnetic field. Again, I started from physical law, the main physical law which describes behavior constant magnetic field is Biot-Savart law. Let me write it. B, magnetic field. If we have, for instance, volume distribution of current, in the earth, this field has expression has the following form. It's generalization of Coulomb's of Pyosavar law, which I wrote yesterday. So if it's a volume formation, several layers, there is a current at point Q. You would like to calculate magnetic field. Use this expression, you will find. That's current density, that's distance LQP. Now, for what is important? Again, complete analogy. I share with you what my way of thinking. Simple, simple, everything should be reduced to the simplest way. In Coulomb's law, you know charges, you can calculate magnetic field. It is exactly the same story here. No influence of medium. Moreover, as Coulomb's law, this law is valid for all electromagnetic methods except high, very high frequency radar or the electrical logging. What we are doing in all EM method, frequency time domain, we measure this magnetic, magnetic field which is related with currents according to Biot-Savart law. Now, that's what we did yesterday. Also, yesterday I, I briefly considered one example, magnetic dipole. Very useful. I only wanted for several reasons to emphasize this source. Extremely useful. Now, let me give you another example. Couple examples and then we will approach to electromagnetic methods. Very known example, loop. We have current loop. So what I'm doing, I use this equation and be outside of this class, I derive formulas, because otherwise it would take a lot of time. I give you final result. So let us ask ourselves, what is the field that's current? Very important for us geophysicists, transmitter. Loop. We would like to know magnetic field. What we are doing, what we are using from textbooks for uh, in other sources, we use this equation and calculate magnetic field. In the case of current loop, for example, radius A, which component of magnetic field here exists and which is equal to zero? Let me ask you. So current loop, circle. Do we have magnetic field caused by this current? Yes, there is a current, Biot-Savart law, we can calculate. Now question, do we have on the axis magnetic field which is perpendicular to the axis? No, we have only here. So common sense tells 
if we are not far away from axis, practically we have vertical field. And vertical component of magnetic field is equal mu naught i a square to uh, a square plus z square three half. Three half. But that's a very known expression. Again, how we got it from Bill Savar law. Now, what is nice about this expression? Let us that square. I hope it's okay. Square. Let us speak about this exp expression. It's correct. First of all, as I told you, as follows from this equation, it's valid not only for constant field but also for electromagnetic, and we use it. Because we are geophysicists, would like to create strong field here, because maybe here there is a target. So let us ask ourselves a couple questions about this expression. That's z distance, that radius, that's current. Let us play a small game with this formula. Suppose current is constant. If I ask you a question, what happens with magnetic field at this point when we start to make small loop, then bigger, 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 bigger. What happens with magnetic field here? You understand my question? Current is constant. Now I start to increase. Uh, sorry? So, so what happens with value of magnetic field? I would like to create here significant field, large field, because maybe there is our body here. We will later discuss it. So I'm very, I'm thinking always about optimal parameter. You, I, all of us think about optimal parameter of the system. One of the natural requirements, let us make field stronger. So. What do you think? What happens if you look in this expression? What happens when at the beginning loop is small, current is the same? Let us simplify it. Situation. Then I start to increase, increase, increase radius of the loop. Huh? Field increases, 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 increases. Yes? Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. are the, uh, there are other suggestions. So, first suggestion, do, uh, did I understand correctly? With increasing radius of the field, I take bigger, bigger, bigger loop, and my field becomes stronger, stronger. Correct? That was statement. At, are there, at that point, it may get smaller, but the total moment of the loop no, we are not talking about the moment of the We are not talking about that. We, are talk we have very practical goal. We, 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 we have some given depth, 100 meters, and then we have small loop, then bigger, 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 bigger. Oh, huge loop. Maybe fuel will be stronger. So. would you. Uh, Summarize what you told. Sorry, so, so let my question is slowly. Uh, uh, let me understand you because I have problem with understanding. Still, I have after twenty years. I have. I, I, exp I hope that more thirty years I will have also problems. Uh, so um, uh, I measure here magnetic field. Loop is small. Now I start to increase radius of loop. What happens with magnetic field? So at the beginning. So decrease from the beginning decreases. Oh, that's what I. That's what what finally we came. Thank you very much. So everybody understands. At the beginning, radius is small. A much smaller than depth. So this term is small with respect to their depth. So we can neglect it. <coughs> but numerator works very well. So at the beginning, with increasing radius of loop, you do increase field on the depth. True? But you think bigger, 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 bigger. 
But then a radius of the loop becomes comparable with depth. Then when you start to increase more, a, you can neglect already z depth. A is bigger. A 5 z1. So 25 1. Forget about it. But here a squared. But here a power a squared 3 half a cube. So always there is maximum. That's simple fact, but useful to know. So it shows be even in simple things, be careful. There is optimal size where you create maximum of the field. I will speak about another factor which is important to choose properly size of transmitter than from point of influence geological noise. But that simple, simple energetical fact, I need strong field. I have to be careful about choosing parameters. That's our example number two. Now, let us, let us do the following. Uh, let us assume what happens if radius of loop is very small. What happens? Approximately, our field will be equal i a square divided by 2 z cube. Correct? Even multiply by pi, divide by pi. What we will get? Area, current, moment. Current, area, moment. Divide 2 pi z cube. So this equation becomes field of magnetic dipole on the axis. Even this expression allows us quickly to evaluate when, from all practical purposes, finite loop behaves as dipole. So it's useful relation. Now that's one example. Let me move forward. I, each time I have to stop myself because <coughs> each area has many, many examples and many, many applications. Now let me do next, next step. <coughs> we, in the case of electrical field, electrical field, either I explain you, uh, explain you why we need system of equations. For almost the same reason, in general, not in magnetoprospective, in general, we also need system of equations of magnetic field. Let me write down it. From Biot-Savart law, not from anything else, we have we obtain two equations of the field. Does does magnetic field have sources? Does magnetic field have sources, masses? Hmm? Uh, charges. charges da? Does magnetic field have ch magnetic charges? No. I advise you today say no. Nobody was able to find these magnetic charges. They are absent. As we have electrical charges, there is no magnetic charges. If you remember what I tried to tell you yesterday, there is two tools. One of them mathematicians invented in order to characterize number, amount of sources or masses. What is the tool? Flux through closed surface. So, physics tells flux of magnetic field through closed surface is equal zero. All, you don't worry where you are, informations in free space, in orbit, always is equal zero. If I take small surface and divide by volume, what we will get? Divergence. Zero. Now, if we are interfaces, if flux equals zero, it means difference between normal component always, always zero. You see how simple, if you grasp 
the main idea. You don't need even to derive. Everything comes from Bill Savar law. But if in parallel you understand meaning of these tools, mathematicals, you can write these equations. Three forms of the second equation of magnetic field. Now, I told you about second tool, which gives you amount of what? Vortexes. What is the generator of magnetic field? Current. So from Biel-Savar law, automatically follows circulation of magnetic field equal current. Circulation, magnetic field, current. What always true, no exception. What is it? Let me show you. We use it widely. We will use today in very soon. Let me take arbitrary contour L. What is written here? What is written here is very important law. You will see how we use it. I will ask you something about geophysics, and this law will help us to answer. Let me take contour. Choose direction of each element, direction of moving. That's dl. That's magnetic field B. Let me take dot product B, dl. Let me perform summation along any closed path. What is written? This integral always is equal, constant, times current, which is going through surface surrounding this contour. I mentioned it last yesterday. Again, this is the contour. There is magnetic field at each point. There is no doubt. We don't know value. We took contour. We don't know direction of the orientation of magnetic field with respect to this contour. If we are engineers, we know we respect physical laws. What we have to ta a, ta tell about this integral along closed path, it must be equal zero. Do we have here current? No. Air. So it's a beautiful indicator of whether we have current through any contour or not. The man who discovered this law was Ampere. It's called Ampere's law. So, just a second. So that's our, I have to write it. Now, no, not I. So what again is written, regardless small, large contour, conducting medium, free space, anywhere, uniform, not uniform, wide, extremely important relation which comes from Biel-Savar law. Circulation magnetic field, it's called circulation, contour close, circulation, is equal amount of currents which going through contour. Now, let me take small contour, very small, and divide by area. What we will get? Hmm? Yesterday, yesterday. That's, that's what I'm going to use as yesterday. So, just a second, just a second. That's current. Current flows, current. Let me do the following. According to uh, Biosavar law or Ampere's law, which comes from Faraday, if I take this contour, what would be integral of magnetic field along this contour? <coughs> huh? Zero. Everybody understands? Because this current does not go through this contour. So it shows zero. It does not care. This lovely device does not care whether we have current somewhere else or not. It cares only about current which goes through surface surrounding by this contour. Now I take this contour. What would happen? If I calculate magnetic field times dl, magnetic field times dl, it's a work. It's a work because force times distance, almost force times distance. What would be the value of integral? 
we don't need value of magnetic field, but we have to respect physical law. Physical law tells, uh, we don't care what is the magnetic field at all these points, how it's directed. It must show what? Current which is going through this area. Now, let me take contour in the plane perpendicular current. Not this contour, this contour. Let me divide by area what you will get. Curl, curl, that's curl, that's curl. And another form of this equation, if you don't have equations, is curl B equal mu naught J. It comes from Bill's, uh, from Ampere's law. Everything comes from Bill's of our law, Ampere's law. That's another form of Ampere's law. So what, what is written here? What, how I read it? I advise you to read I don't know mathematics very well, but I know meaning. When it's written here, I read this equation is obtained from Bill's of our law. It tells you magnetic field is caused by current, and that's all. Mathematical part is completely different story. Now, if we apply this equation to some interface, exactly as I did for electrical field, we will get third form difference of tangential components are equal zero if there is no surface current. So three forms of equation magnetic field. All of them came from Bill Savard law. That's all about system of equations. Only one problem for understanding. I tried clearly explain why do we need system of equations of electrical field. Because closed circuit problem. Uh, we don't know distribution of charges. Why do we need system of equations in case of magnetic field? Constant magnetic field. Usually we don't need. Fortunately in geophysics we practically don't need. But there are cases we do, when we do need. And yesterday we spoke about it briefly. We will not speak more. When you have magnetic medium, when you place magnetic material into magnetic field, what happens inside? Molecular currents arise. And not only they existed, but they no more oriented randomly, and they align along field, their moment. And their moment depends on the field, total field. Field caused by primary field and neighbor molecular current. So in order to calculate field, we have to know moment magnetization. In order to know uh, magnetization, we have to know field. So it's a closed circuit problem. That's the reason why we usually write this system of equations. Now, I would like to give you a couple more examples before we start to move to electromagnetic fields. <coughs> Suppose we have horizontal layer medium. Let me ask you a question. What do you think? You have electrode A. We still in direct current business. B. We always use receiver MN. Why instead of receiver don't use a magnetometer? and get information about horizontal layer medium. So please imagine magnetometer. Let us make small separation, then bigger separation, bigger separation. Maybe we will increase depth investigation. And instead of, instead of measuring voltage, simply measure magnetic field as a function for instance, function of distance, AB. Who knows? K 
Can we do it or we cannot do it? Again, physics. We have currents, correct? Everywhere there are currents. Certainly, their distribution depends on separation A, B. Small separation A, B, where currents are mainly concentrated? Upper layer. Then we start to increase separation. It looks like current go deeper. According to our law, magnetic field is caused by all these currents. So first impression is yes. Yes, if you change separation between A B, medium is horizontally layer, then you can measuring magnetic field, you can get information about medium. Is it right or wrong? Question is clear? Question, the most important question is clear or not? So, always we would like to do something new, I hope. New. Oh, why we have to use a man receivers, a man voltmeter? Let us take magnetometer, that's it and measure magnetic field by call caused by all these currents and it looks like we can get information about layered medium again what i am doing i take small separation currents here i measure magnetic field due to currents in the first layer then i increase again measure magnetic field again again so it looks like i will get curve of sound views and obtain row one, row two, row three, etc. It's, it's not important whether you know or not, but it's important to ask yourself what happens because it's strange. It looks like it can be done. It turns out, no. Before I answer, before I ask you this question, let me ask you a question in gravity. It's not a unique situation. We have gravity, horizontal layer medium. Density one, density two, density three. Can we get information about geoelectrical, oh, sorry, not geoelectrical, uh, <laughs> section uh, about density and thickness of layers? Huh? No, of course no, because we measure total effect. Too many unknowns. You can measure at any point, you will get the same result. So for gravity, it's forbidden to perform soundings. It, gravity is based on the fact that there is a lateral change of density. So no surprise, if you will find out no way to do it in magnetics. Let me show how it works. And you will respect more equations which I wrote. We have horizontal layer medium. Just a second. <coughs> Let me take current electrode A. Only one. Principal superposition allows to understand what happens with help of two electrodes. Tell me, please, how current will be distributed? horizontally layered medium. So don't think about wire here. Let us assume here some wire, current comes here. How current will be distributed in medium? From point of symmetry, I'm asking. Huh? Axial symmetry, correct? So current will go here, 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 correct? Everybody understands this? Symmetry, because horizontally layer medium, as soon as we assume it's not horizontal layer medium, we are in trouble. We cannot say symmetrical, but in this case, symmetrical distribution. Now, let me take mentally contour. Clear? On the Earth's surface. Circle with radius r. What, where I measure? where I measure, that's our surface. Now, 
I don't know value of magnetic field, but what do I know? Magnetic field at this point will be the same here, 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 here. Let me take ampere slow. Or first equation of the field. B G L equal mu not I. What is the I? Current which comes from transmitter, from battery. Since magnetic field, let me, if I consider this counter, magnetic field dot product will give you component of magnetic field tangential to circle. Let us call B phi. So we will have B phi dl equal mu not i. It looks like very simple, but now break point. B phi constant or not constant on this circle? Does it depend where I take this point or no? But this is the crucial point. If it's constant, I can take it out. So B phi equal integral dl times mu naught i. What is the integral DL along contour? Length 2 pi r. So B phi will be equal mu naught i divide 2 pi r. That's what we measure. Do we have conductivity of the medium? Do we have thickness? No. That's the reason why you will ne why I don't advise you to use magnetometer for soundings. However, so however, it's a very good method. It could be a very good method, and sometimes it's a very good method when we do it for non-horizontal layer medium. So you see it's example how to use our physical laws, our equation. Very important. Very important. Now let me speak a little about very known method of mining prospecting. This method is called, as you know, mu Salamas. We have time? Yes, we have. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. mu, mu, mu ele masse. In a, I call it method of charge body. Who knows French? And I think it's a reasonable translation. Method of charged body. It's amazingly popular method. Amazingly popular method. We have a conductor, dike, or body. Suppose it uh, goes in this direction. It could be dike. It's better to make dike. Rho two, rho one. Suppose in some place we know contact. It's a very, very well-known method. I will speak about very little. That's profound. Now, understandable, it's a plane. It's our surface. Now, current is clever. It goes along very good conductor. Now let me check how you understood Biosavar law or recall Biosavar law. I'm sure you knew <coughs> about it. Suppose I have, now it's time to use coil. I will not, not co coil or tometer doesn't matter. Suppose we measure vertical component of magnetic field. What would be behavior of magnetic field due to current which is going perpendicular to the black box? current goes perpendicular to the black ball, let us use Biot-Savart law. Could you plot graph or suggest me how to plot? Far away, what would be the magnetic field due to this lovely large currents? Far, far away. Zero, no, we far away, the iron rule, far away always zero. 
that's far away. So here magnetic field is zero. What happens with vertical component of magnetic field above? Zero. zero. Why? Because magnetic field tension. So here is zero, here is zero, we deal with such behavior that there is no way we have to have maximum. Correct? Maximum or minimum doesn't matter. And then back. Excellent. That was invented 100 years ago. Nothing new. But that's application of Biosavar law. Now we are going to another. Another profile. Another profile. We watch for crossover and we know direction of the strike. Now, uh, uh, what happens with horizon, uh, horizontal component of magnetic field? Suppose you would like to measure vertical and horizontal. What would happen? Maximum over body. Correct? So it will be, but that's much more pleasant. You see, exactly change of the sign. Now, it's a very popular method. I don't want to speak about it in detail. But let me return back a little to electrical field. Missile mass method is used in different modifications. Can we use it measuring electrical field? That's my question. Can we, for example, here to measure to measure M voltage. Of course we can. What happens in this case? If you put here char current electrode, what happens at interface? Surface charges with density sigma. Positive charges arise. The reason why it's called method of charge body. So you can measure either potential or electrical field, and you will get the same result. Now, when we have elongated body, it's much more preferable to use this beautiful fact that currents go into and measure magnetic field. But when we have rather isometrical body, that's different story. Not exactly isometrical, but Please imagine not very elongated body. In this case, we usually measure what? Hmm? Electrical field. Either we measure potential and plot equipotential lines, or we measure electrical field along coprofiles. Very known system of measurements. Let me give you one example useful which for engineers it's clear for students I'm not sure how you are aware you have bore hole bore hole one bore hole another you have one layer you have another layer you don't know this conducting layer that your deposit is one layer or it was broken, you have two layers. What is the excellent method to find out? Simple, cheap, take current electrode here and do here what? Measure voltage. Amen. If it's one body, you will get here large anomaly. If it's broken, no relation, you will get extremely small anomaly. If you are not sure, replace positions. Now, it's again mu mass. Now, another completely different story from hydrogeology. How mu mass is used in hydrogeology sometimes. You have layer with water. It's moving. You would like to know direction of movement and velocity of movement. How to solve this problem? Again, you solve a mass. 
Suppose, suppose, only suppose, we take current electrode with, which has back with salt and pores. So let us make a tar here, battery electrode B. Now, what happens? Here, mud, water, here, salt. So, what happens with time? Flow, it starts to flow. Now, at the first moment we measure equipotential surface, the lines, the center is located where is electrode. With time, cloud, maximum clouds will be shifted, and equipotential surface will be shifted. So measuring velocity of movement of the center of this light. We can even calculate, there is a theory which allows to calculate how quickly uh, there is a motion of the water plus direction. So missile mass is used in measuring magnetic field, electrical field for good conductors in borehole, in surface, and even sometimes if environmental agency allows to uh, we use in ground, ground water. Now, now, uh, when we started, uh, eight, so it's time to stop. Mm -hmm. Let us stop. Make next step. So, so far, we in the, I discussed very, very briefly ele constant electrical and magnetic field. Let me summarize. We have several physical laws. They are based, that's, they are start for everything. Coulomb's law. Second, principle of charge conservation. Then, Ohm's law. Then, Biel-Savart law. Or Ampere's law. All one, two, three, four. <coughs> I didn't mention Ampere's law, but I will not be very, uh, certainly I'm not very accurate in this point, but that's the most important part. Using this law, we derive system of equation of electro, electro, constant electrical field. If we understand all these four laws, I promise you, in principle, you can understand all electrical and magnetic methods used in geophysics without any exception. Now, using these laws, we derive system of equations. Let me write system of equations. First, equation was current electrical field equals zero. It came from Coulomb's law. Then, divergence electrical field equals Density of charge divide epsilon naught. Then curl magnetic field equal mu naught times conduction current. When I use word conduction, I mean moving charges, electron or ions. <coughs> the divergence B equal zero. Also, also, also we found Let's put it aside. Divergence current density equal zero. Principle of charge conservation. Let me pay attention to these four equations. First of all, these equations were derived inside of layers. Inside of layers. Each of them has its surface analogy. On the surface, what we have? Always, without any exception, tangential component electrical field K 
continuous. I pronounce word continuous, but it's not too bad for us from practical point of view understand the following. I don't know value of the field, but I don't care what is the medium. Always electrical field from both sides is the same. Now, from this equation, we found out always, without any exception, if there is a difference normal component electrical field, it's due to charge which arises there. From this equation, from Biosavar law, we found out tangential component magnetic field always continuous function. If we introduce surface current, it will be surface current density. We will not speak about it today. Now, what, what this equation tells us? Difference of normal component magnetic field always this equal zero, normal component magnetic field, continuous function. Not too bad. Everything was derived from this physical law. Now, let us pick, let us make some experiment. I would like that you will, would, you don't need to know expressions, but it's not too bad to know basics. When you read Kerr electrical field equals zero, what does it mean? First of all, it means this equation is derived from Coulomb's law. What does it tell us? That voltage along closed path, path is equal zero. What does it mean? Electrical field is not caused by vortexes, only charges. That's how engineer has to read. Nothing else. Don't, don't care about theorems. For, that's the point. What is written here? Charges create electrical field. How it was derived? From Coulomb's law. Where you have charge, divergence equals density charge. If no charge, equals zero. That's all. Now, what is here? No source. First of all, let us start from this equation. Always, bravely, you can impress yourself as surround divergence magnetic field equals zero. Why? No magnetic charges. And uh, what is written here? Only currents create magnetic field. Only currents. Now, integral form of this equation tells you about uh, Ampere's law. Always, if you calculate magnetic field along closed path, it will be total current which is going to surface. Nothing else. We are not talking about mathematics. Now, how many equations we got? Four. Four. Watch. For each electrical field, for electrical, for each field, two. And as I told you at the beginning, it's a relation, the, mo the most natural relationship, because between what and what? Children and parents. What are the parents' electrical field in theory? Vortexes and sources. One of them tells you for constant electrical field, sources, charges. What it tells you? No vortexes. What? Again, it must be two equations. But here, vice versa. Per one parent, only vortex. But no source. Two fields, four equations. We are very close to Maxwell equations. A little more, few more steps. I will not change number of equations, but only slightly improve. What is interesting? This equation was derived for constant magnetic field, remains always valid. You will see it remains the same for any field in radar, in time domain, in frequency. We never have ch magnetic charges. This equation, which was derived from Col Coulomb's law, remains the same. Sources of electrical field, charges. So two equations will not be touched at all. Now. Let us start the third, the most important part. It was 
so far it was introduction. Third part is electromagnetic fields. At the be and first our subject one physical law, one of the fundamental physical laws. In effect, we have to introduce two new physical laws. At the beginning of last century, or the very, not very beginning, but first part of the last century, Faraday discovered new phenomena. How it's called? Huh? Faraday's <laughs> law. <laughs> OK, very good, Faraday's law. Who can formulate me Faraday's law? So there is no way to understand our electromagnetic methods without Faraday's law. Now, he found out, he found out that if you take loop, current loop, with voltmeter, loop, with voltmeter, it's terminal points, or let me make it better, meter. Let us speak about this current loop. He just find out when magnetic field which crosses areas surrounding by loop changes with time, something arises in this loop. Voltage arises. Voltage along closed path is called no problem, let me remind you. Voltage, if you remember last what you knew before, yesterday we discussed, it's equal always. Voltage. But this lovely sum or integral. Each time when path is closed, this voltage has a little different name. Hmm? Electromotive force and nothing else. So as soon as contour is closed, he found out electromotive force, which voltmeter measures, or in other words, voltage along this path, is equal minus df dt. What is the f? f is magnetic flux. f is equal surface bds. So that's surface. Please imagine magnetic field at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point. Nobody told magnetic field does not change here. It changes generally. Nobody told you the magnetic field must be perpendicular. Doesn't matter. What matters? Value of this integral. Let me show you again. So let me take this contour. Let me take arbitrary surface S. Well, that's GS. That's B. So what is written here? Please take dot product. Orientation could be arbitrary. Dot product could be positive, negative, equal zero. Take sum of everything. Take derivative with respect to time. Don't forget about minus. And it will show you electromotive force measured by voltmeter. That's what he discovered. And I'm going to spend first hour discussing this law. It's not so simple, but importance, it's great importance for us. So let us discuss. 
When he discovered this law, it was discovered experimentally, he used wire. Wire. Wire, the terminal points connected with voltmeter. So when we, he didn't tell about anything about current through wire, no. Simply electromotive force, this integral, this integral along closed path is equal rate of change of flux with time. Now, now it turns out that this law is valid always, whether you have wire or you don't have wire. That's first important generalization. So when we pronounce electromotive force, nobody cares whether it's an electromotive force along copper wire or along some path which we only imagine. Only one condition, path must be closed. That's all. Material could be quartz, could be clay, could be metal, could be not uniform material at all. In one place, clay, another uh, sand, another metal. Part must be closed, that's all. Moreover, it could be done in free air, or free space in air, but that's part. Let us mentally imagine experiment. At this part, that's my voltmeter. And I claim if I would be able, this voltmeter, magic voltmeter, would be able to measure, he would show you this electromotive force, and it will be exactly equal rate of change of flux, magnetic flux, through this source. So first breakthrough in our understanding is forget about material completely. So in this form, Faraday's law should be written as. So first original form is electromotive force equal gf the t or Integral along any path A equal this integral along any path equal minus D dt surface integral B D S. So let me show you again. That's my path. That's my, for example, normal D S perpendicular, and that's direction along which I am traveling. Only iron roll vector dl shows direction along which I am correct, and normal this must be related in such a way that from this end you see counterclockwise movement. Is it serious? Serious, but not very much. If we make mistake, it means we will get instead of 10 millivolts minus 10 millivolts, that's it. But that's, in order to describe experiments correctly, between DL and DS, must be certain mutual orientation shown here. Now, usually in our electrical me electromagnetic methods, our contour does not change. So, instead of this integral, we can write simply minus integral, dB dt, so we can take derivative inside. So again, electromotive force induced in any contour is equal minus integral of rate of change of magnetic field, flux of rate of change magnetic field through surface surrounding by this contour. That's another second form of Faraday's law. What this, but 
At this moment, I would like to make only one comment, most important. Experiments were made with copper, with other materials, with wire, but everything is true regardless of what is the material. It's always, always true. Now, how to read this equation? There, what creates what? When I say how to read, I mean what creates what. Can we imagine electromotive force which we measure in our voltmeter? Can we imagine electromotive force measured voltmeter if we don't have electrical field? My question. force equal integral E D L. Now, question. Could you imagine electromotive force if there is no electrical field? You can imagine the electromotive force equal zero, but electrical field is not equal zero. That's possible to imagine. But it's impossible to imagine by definition how electromotive force exists if no electrical field. Clear? Now, so how to read this equation? Very simple. Electrical field arise, arises when what? When magnetic field with time changes. So this physical law, Faraday's law, has fundamental meaning. It discovered, it, or Faraday, Faraday discovered the second generator of electrical field. Rate of change of magnetic field with time. Now, let, let me magnetic field. For sure, a lot of magnetic field in this room. They change, they change with different frequency, with different rate of time shortly. Some of the frequency, some of them not frequency behavior, doesn't matter. Sinusoidal behavior, not sinusoidal behavior. Now, let me take some certain frequency, you know, 60 gigahertz. So, is there magnetic field with frequency around 60 gigahertz? Perhaps there is. Yes, 50 or 60 should be. Huh? 50. 50, so 50 gigahertz. So there is a magnetic field. For example, uh, let us assume at this room, magnetic field with frequency which changes sinus 50 gigahertz, directed in this way. Now, what this Faraday's law tells you, take contour, connect it with voltmeter, take from metal, from copper. And this magnetic field changes with time at each point of this area. Take this dot product, perform summation, and voltmeter will show you sinusoid with frequency 50 gigahertz. Now, magnetic, you remember magnetic field is vertical. Now let me start to, to rotate contour. If I take contour in this way, what happens with electromotive force? Zero. So let me rotate, rotate, rotate. That's what we are doing very often in the field. Uh, let me rotate, rotate, and make it a loop horizontal. I will get maximum. But what is in most important, most important, in this case, perpendicular to the loop, will coincide with direction of rate of change magnetic field. So if we mentally take such contour, divide by area, and contour is small, what we will get? The third time I back to this very difficult concept if you don't understand meaning, but very easy if you don't understand. Curl, curl electrical field,
equal minus db dt. Again, Faraday's slow. No difference with this case. No difference at all. Uh, what I did again, which is a mentally, um, I mentally imagine contour, which perpendicular to rate of change magnetic field with time. Contour is small, so I divide by area. That's contour. If contour may be the Yeah. You don't need mathematics if you understand. Yeah. So there are several forms of Faraday's law. One, two, and three. So is the big one vortex? Vortex, the minus the B the T is the vortex. Now you like it or you don't like, let us discuss one philosophical question, which I raised yesterday. Electrical field is caused by rate of change magnetic field with time. It happens among of students, engineers and scientists, everybody, at least my experience, I could be wrong. Uh, but always there is some distortion of equilibrium from point of understanding different laws. If you ask a monk of us geophysicists, do I understand Coulomb's law? Everybody happy to say, I do understand. That's my charge. That creates electrical field. When we start to speak about Faraday's law, it becomes for some strange reason, more difficult. How rate of change of magnetic field with time creates electrical field? That's what written here or here. It's really difficult to understand. For some strange reason, when magnetic field changes with time, electrical field arises. It's difficult. I still don't understand. I accept it, but I don't understand. But I don't understand how electrical charge creates here electrical field. I also don't understand. So understanding for us means, first of all, we know where to stop, not to uh, dig deeper. On another hand, we have to know relationship. That's understanding. That's happened last century, and it's not fair to say I do understand Coulomb's law, or even worse, I do understand Newton's law when I mentioned yesterday how this mass, this mass without heart, without muscles, without brain, how this mass does create at this point gravitational field. It's a real force. Please imagine. You, I think you can. If you really ready to make confession, you have to tell, I don't understand. But I do understand the relationship between uh, mass and uh, force. I know it changes with distance, the square of distance. I know direction, everything I know. Exactly the same Coulomb's law, exactly the same Faraday's law. But it's impossible to understand electromagnetics if we don't understand meaning of all this equation. Meaning only one. Unlike constant electrical field, electric, constant electrical field, if magnetic field changes with time, second generator arises. For instance, at this point, suppose at this spot, for example, how I speak about for a day, one more, and then we will be ready to write down this building. I understand here there is magnetic field. It changes with time. So what I meant when I would like to understand this equation, what I am doing, I say this equation is the same as I mentally imagine contour, contour, which located in the plane perpendicular db dt rate of change. 
I calculate electromotive force, I divide by area, and that's my curl. Now, I will give you example, you will see, but now let me only point out. When people, when we students, engineers, scientists, professors, always when they say curl, they are, if you ask them what does curl mean, they, they instantly use finger and make circle. Well, it means electrical field gene, uh, changes around. No. There is no body, uh, there is no any relation between direction of magnetic field and circle behavior of electrical field. Electrical field could be directed, for example, from me to you. It could be all have all one direction, for example, from east to west. I will show, so curl does not mean word rotation, no. In each example, electrical field has own behavior, and a couple examples will demonstrate it. Only in order to calculate curl, I have to take a closed path, that's all. So, back to our equations. One, two, three. All of them have the same meaning. Change magnetic field with time does create electrical field. Now let us look in this equation, at this equation. Is it good equation to calculate electrical field? Extremely bad. Awfully bad. It's, it's not as Coulomb or Newton's law. Let us watch. I took path, closed path. At each point, there is electrical field. One, another, third. What he is written? Take sum of all electrical field times dl, tangential components, dl. Perform summation, and that will be equal minus change of flux with time. Suppose you know this quantity. By no means you can calculate electrical field. How many unknowns? Hmm? Too many. Too many. Understandable? Or it's not clear? If it's not clear, please time to ask me because it's the most, the most important law in all electromagnetic methods. Huh? Not clear. Good. Finally, finally. Now, just a second. <coughs> I will prepare. It's very important law, very correct for all our purpose, but completely as Coulomb's law useless, except very special cases to calculate electrical field. Let us discuss it. Please imagine arbitrary contour. Close. Close? Close. Can I mentally divide this contour in many elements? Suppose it's a wire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and more. Now, I would like to calculate electromotive force. Electromotive force, how we have to calculate, what we have to do in order to calculate electromotive force. Some the dot products. Really some dot products. Can I write some dot products EK DL DL K. DL, it means that's DL. K1, 2, 3, 4, 5. K from 1 to 12. Clear? Dot product. Everything is equal what? 
minus minus flux rate of change of magnetic flux through this area. Suppose we do no magnetic field. Suppose we do no at this point, at this point. So no problem to calculate this number. So we got equation, we received equation with respect to what? Right part is known. What we don't know? Electrical field. So it's equation which relates known flux with a known electrical field. Again, Faraday's law is the law which tells change of flux with time is equal electromotive force. Coulomb's law tells charges create electrical field. If I have a charge, can I calculate electrical field at this point? Charge divide square of distance. This law has the same meaning. Rate of change magnetic field does generate electrical field. Now I would like to use it in order to calculate again electrical field. You follow me? But there is a problem. What is the problem? Who told us that electrical field everywhere the same? Faraday's Faraday only discovered electromotive force electromotive force is equal rate of change of flux with time. What we can calculate from Faraday's law only if you know flux? Electromotive force. But electromotive force is a happens because we do have electrical field. We would like to calculate electrical field. And then we are in trouble. I divided 12 elements. It means 12 unknowns. One equation. So it's useless. Why I'm doing it? In order to show you necessity of maximum equations. Because Physical laws are different from physical content and as a tools to calculate field. Coulomb's law, beautiful law, which does allow to do it. Faraday's law usually does not allow to do it. If questions, I deeply appreciate it. <coughs> now, <coughs> let, me, let us check our understanding of Coulomb's law. Oh, for this law, I have medium or body here, Earth surface, row one, row two, row three, row four, who knows, row three, row four, etc. Please, com very complicated medium, different formations, different interfaces. Can I take mentally contour? I show this contour. Huge size, huge arbitrary shape. Can I say, in spite of the fact that he one medium, he another medium, he interfaces, can I say, can I write this equation or not? Hmm? Yes. So again, this law is independent what is the medium. It's not only free space, it's not only wire, always, always through. Now, let me summarize this result. No, before summarizing, we have a few minutes, very good. Let us discuss our measurements with receiver coil, and then we will summarize. I will discuss with you later. Suppose we have a loop, current loop. 
transmitter. It turns out, as you know, magnetic field, vector lines of magnetic field has this form, correct? Uh, what about electrical field? We are talking about now electromagnetic field. Since magnetic field changes with time, some function time, time domain or frequency, will we have electrical field or will not have electrical field? So I'm talking about free space, what coil, Coil, free space, magnetic field changes with time. It's not difficult to realize that the electrical field will be horizontal, perpendicular to magnetic field. So please imagine plane. And now you have receiver, voltmeter, coil. So I'm looking from the, uh, on the Earth's surface. That's our transmitter. So do you agree electrical field has this direction? So we came to our coil. What would be direction of el electrical field at this point? Hmm? We have to mentally go circle, so that's direction of electrical field, correct? At this point, this <coughs> direction. At this point, this direction electrical field. Clear completely or not? The same is here, here. So when you placed your coil, wire of the coil is arbitrary oriented with respect to electrical field. Is it clear or not very clear? Now, what do we measure? What voltmeter with coil measure? Hmm? Huh? Fortunately for us, voltmeter does show presence of this electrical field. Now, and it measures electromotive force, but what does electromotive force mean? Integral from M to N, wire is twisted, so almost from a long closed path. Sorry, I didn't hear. Electromotive force, correct? Of what I have to write here? Electrical field, but not some dot product. You mean some dot product, yes? So that's what it measures. So you see, coil is extremely clever. It does not care how at each point electrical field is directed. Direction of electrical field with respect to DL. Everybody understand what does DL mean? I will make bigger. That's my DL. That's my electrical field. Here DL. Electrical field maybe this way. So here also electrical field this way DL. While loop is extremely clever device. It measures sum. And this sum is called electromotive force. But due to Faraday, due to Faraday, this crazy sum is equal to something minus rate of change magnetic field. So coil does not measure magnetic field. Coil does not measure rate of change of magnetic field. But Faraday opened eyes for us. He tells, measure this electromotive force 
and it turns out this electromotive force is equal minus rate of change of flux through this coil, not outside. Clear? Now, we have a couple minutes. Again, this coil. I don't like this picture. Just a second. That's our transmitter again. Suppose we are relatively far away from our transmitter, relatively with respect to size. How you would present electrical field in this area? Again, you agree it looks like it must be circle. So practically electrical field at each point will be in one direction. Correct? Tangential to the circle. I show arrow. That's my electrical field. You don't see no circles. You remember about curl and my finger. So there is no any circles. You simply have electrical field which is almost parallel to each other. Again, everybody understands it's electrical field caused by rate of change, magnetic field of transmitter. Now, now what we are doing, we put here what? Loop. And what do voltmeter measures? Voltmeter again, I started my lectures yesterday from statement. Voltmeter is extremely clever device. It measures not difference of potentials, otherwise it would be in trouble here. It measures voltage. When closed path, this voltage is called how? EMF, electromotive force. So no in curves, nothing. Simply we have to take dot product. And that's what voltmeter is doing. Unfortunately, what voltmeter is not able to tell what is the electrical field at each point of loop. But it is able to tell you whole number. But Faraday, I repeat, was able to tell us more told this number is equal to rate of change of magnetic field with flux. Now, last comment about this loop. Electrical field intersects wire. Therefore, what must also arise? Yesterday I wrote each time when electrical field intersects wire, what would happen? Therefore, normal component electrical field is not, is not zero. Therefore, on the surface of each wire, we have charges. Oh, charges, be careful. They're condenser. They form they form a condenser with earth. We worry at high frequencies about leakage. So that's Faraday's law. Let us make a break and then maybe correct that stem break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.